Lee's family. I'm here today to talk about um, some of the challenges that you might face if you are thinking of opening a bank account. Um, these are things that no one told me. And I was like, you know what, while I'm having this thought, I need to share this with you all because this may be a challenge for some of you as well. Um, I thought it was important to talk about this because I had a situation which I felt could have been prevented if it was handled appropriately. Um, but y'all would be proud of me because, you know, I didn't cut up, get an attitude. I was very patient. I think I was more patient than most people might have been. And it probably was because I was taking care of other business. But let me just give y'all a scenario. So as you know, I'm in my new space. Um, and I was staying with someone when I came to the continent. I knew that situation was not for me and I had to get out of there. So my plan initially was that I was going to stay with this individual, um, give them, you know, American dollars to help them out. Um, and I felt like I was helping myself too, because I would have been helping out another repat, you know, um, and then exploring the Gambia to decide where I was going to finally settle if I decide to settle here or Sierra Leone, like that's still on the table, right? So with this individual, I know it's not for me. Now I got to start looking for a place. So, um, the day of my appointment to go see the place is when I met my driver. He was kind of like in between his situation as far as his finances because he does uh, tours for his, um, like a, a company out of Holland. Like he has partners that are from Holland. And of course with COVID, no one was coming, blah, blah, blah. So he was just in his truck thinking about how he was gonna be able to maintain his tour business. And um, he was driving, doing some private, you know, rides. And so when I caught up with him, I was just looking to jump in a taxi to get to my appointment. And I told him where I was going. And he said, well, I wasn't going there. I was just going to turntable. But if you need me to take you further, when everybody gets out, I will take you. I said, okay, you know, and I'm willing to pay the extra fare. So um, that's how we met. And he's my driver to this day. Like, we still hang tight. And it's worked for him because... There haven't been any tourists, so I've been like the person that's been providing that income for him in the absence of tourists, right? So as you all know, it's tourist season again now, so I'll probably see less of him because I'll be in my location uh, trying to get the business set up. So let me get back to the bank situation because he's been with me every step of that process as well. Okay, so like I said, I met him. He takes me to the appointment for the uh, apartment. I decide I love it. I want this space. And um, when I get to the place, you know, I talk to the lady and she says, okay, well, this is how much it's going to be um, for three months. You know, um, my realtor was able, you all know about my realtor, C. Uh, she was able to uh, convince the landlord to take three months. And I was kind of surprised because I was told they take a year. But people are open, especially with everything that's going on. They will take a year. They will take six months. They will take three months. Sorry about that, y'all. I'm getting messages on WhatsApp. So um, the landlord said three months. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Like, I can take care of my other business with these funds, you know. So um, we go to, uh, we agree to meet at her bank since I don't have an account yet. So I can transfer my funds from my card directly into her account. Sounds reasonable, sounds easy to do, we're both present. So we go to her bank, which is EcoBank, right? And when we get to the EcoBank, you know, the girl seems like she doesn't really know what we're talking about, so I'm not really feeling comfortable with her, but there is a machine there, so how much damage can she do, right? Okay, so she takes my card, which is a card from the States. She swipes my card like it's a debit transaction. She's supposed to withdraw those funds and then give them to my landlord who is present. So let's say it's a thousand, thousand dollars. That'll be an easy number to remember. So $1,000 is supposed to come off my card and go directly into my landlord's account. 
So when a little receipt prints out, it says that the transaction failed. That's all it says on the receipt, transaction failed. So the girl is like, are you sure you have the funds? I'm like, of course I have the funds. Like I wouldn't be here doing this if I didn't have the funds. I'm like, it must be something with the card because I had just used a cash machine and I didn't have a problem and I knew my balance, right? Okay, so she says, well, it says transaction failed. So something told me check my account. So I have the mobile app from my bank, which is a credit union from the States on my phone. I go on my phone, I look at my account and it says that $1,000 has been withdrawn and an international service fee has been withdrawn. So let's say I think the international service fee was like $10. So that's been withdrawn with this bank's name as well as the full transaction. So I'm like, okay, you're telling me the money didn't come out, but obviously it did come out because um, it's showing on my account that these funds have been withdrawn. She says, well, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, you have to contact your bank. And I'm like, what? What kind of tomfoolery is this? What are you talking about? Why would I need to contact my bank for a mistake you made in Africa right here, right now? Like, let's call your superiors. What are you talking about? No, it, it's not us. It, it's Visa. If you go through Visa, it's going to be 45 days. We have to do an internal invest. I'm like, this is some bull. So my landlord's like, you know, calm down. It's okay. Now I'm concerned because I don't want to miss out on the space. I don't want her to think I'm playing with her time. She's like, no, no, calm down. It's okay. Um, she said, uh, I know, um, you know, an executive uh, at the, the main branch of my bank so let's go to his office so we go to his office and he's just like well no this transaction you know it looks like it was done correctly but this is something that you would have to go through your bank or visa would have to do a 45 day thing i'm like this is nonsense like i cannot believe that y'all are not having this girl take any responsibility for this transaction that you're not willing to check your funds or at least get back to me at the end of the day and tell me what's going on so nobody had an answer for me all he could say was he was sorry he kept apologizing i'm like your apologies is not putting my money back in my account so you need to save all of that like i wasn't trying to hear it so eventually i just told my landlord um i said you know i'm gonna get up i'm gonna get up because i'm getting upset and that i didn't come here to do this so we leave and i contact my bank in the states immediately and i tell them that you know this transaction took place i give them the transaction number i tell them the error that was made um and that i need to open you know a claim basically so I opened a claim to uh, let them know that this transaction was done. And I tell the guy, uh, you know, what happened. And so again, another knucklehead on the phone. Like I don't understand people when they're doing their job sometimes. So he says to me, well, um, this transaction would have to be proved. I'm like, what are you talking about? It has to be proved. You can see on my account that money was taken out. The name of the person who took it out is there. And I'm telling you, I have a receipt that says it wasn't done and you're not acknowledging and that this person who I'm supposed to give the money to did not receive the funds. So I'm getting frustrated now. I'm getting annoyed. I tell, so then he finally says to me that with a transaction like this, um, they have to do an investigation. And once the investigation is done, they will contact me. So then my thing is, well, I want my funds. So then what they do is they give you a provisional credit, right? So this provisional credit that they give you, they give you your money back. So let's say they give me $1,000 back. I'm like, okay, well, where's the $10 for the international fee? They won't touch that. Mind you, I'm being charged for an international fee that actually didn't happen. Whatever, I argued that at another time. So he says, well, we'll, we'll give you back $1,000. So they put that in, uh, back into my account within two or three days. But now I have 30 days to respond. So here's the issue. They're going to mail it to me. It has to be mailed. So I'm like, I need more than 30 days to respond because it's going to take me 30 days to get the doggone letter that you're sending to me. Trying to explain this to him. Then, of course, I don't have an address. 
So now that's the issue. So what they do is they send this appeal to my old address and they're wondering why I haven't appealed. So then, like I said, this happened in like June. So by July 1st now, I'm noticing that $1,000 has been pulled out of my account. So I'm like, yo, why is this money out of my account? I told him, make a special note on the account. Tell them that I need more time to respond. He said, no problem. He would make a note of it. Y'all know he didn't make a note of it. So July 1st, when I called them, they told me they had snatched the provisional credit back because I didn't respond to prove that it happened. So like I said, frustrating. So finally I get somebody on the phone for two days. I'm telling this woman what's going on, where I'm located, what's happening, blah, blah, blah. She finally says to me that um, I need to go into that branch where this happened and demand my funds back or they're going to send me another letter, which they sent to the wrong address again, even though I sent a correction, giving me time to appeal. So now I'm like done with the states because they're not being any of any assistance. So I go back to the bank and I tell them I want my money back. I'm like, it's been 45 days and I still haven't gotten this corrected because my bank, I explained that situation. When I tell y'all frustrating, but I wasn't giving up on my money, right? So I go to the banks. They tell me they got to investigate, come back the next morning. I'm pissed, but I leave. I come back the next day. They give me back my funds. It's the same dizzy girl that did the transaction. Never apologizes, never says sorry, never says, I'm sorry I inconvenienced you. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember this transaction. And I'm like, the transaction you messed up? And she just looks. Don't look for no apologies. Don't look for no apologies. Don't expect uh, customer service because folks be looking at you like what? Don't be in a store and drop something or spill something because it's going to still be on your grocery receipt, right? Just so y'all know, heads up. So then I decide after all of that, I get my money back and I go, you know what? I think this is a sign that I need to go open my own account. I need a bank account here. Here's the problem. So when you know when you come, you have a they you have your time that you're here. If you're here past a certain amount of time, past 30 days, you need a stamp on your passport. After that, you need to be here a certain amount of time before you can get the residency stamp. So here's the drama. So I go to a bank. Now you know I'm not going to that bank that messed up my money because I don't trust them. So I go to a bank and I try to um open an account. So they tell me can't open an account because you don't have a residency card. I'm like, okay, where do I get this residency card? So I call my, my contact that stamps my passport, help me with my visa. And they say, well, you know, you could get it, but you have to be here past or come. When you come back in November, you'll have your residency card. So I said, okay, no problem. So that made me say, well, maybe I need to wait to open my account, but let me, and then my driver says, well, listen, come to my bank. Like we have, you know, I, they don't ask for all of that. Just go to my bank. So then we go to his bank, which is called Trust Bank. Um, and Trust Bank says, oh, we need a photo ID and we need your passport. And I'm like, okay, so now I got to run home because I generally don't walk around my passport. I just have a picture of my passport on my phone, but they wanted a photo ID, something else. So I went back to get a driver's license. I come back to the bank and uh, the guy is like, oh no, we don't do uh, those transactions here. In, in my office, you need to go see somebody up front. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Your partner right there just told us to come back. He says, well, we don't do that back here. So apparently dude was going to help us when we first came but now his supervisor's there and he's telling us we got to deal with the people in the front of the bank, whatever. So we go back, we sit with this girl and the girl says, well, you're going to love this, y'all, because it's actually a checklist of things that you need. So now this is my, would have been my third trip back to the bank. And I was like, I'm not coming back. I'm going to wait till November when I get my residency card and I can go to any bank I want. So the first bank I went to was Access Bank that asked for the residency card. Um, that is a bank that's known like across the diaspora, I guess. I'm not familiar with them, but I think they might be in the UK. Um, so here's the list. Requirements, right? You need one recent passport size photograph, a valid photo ID, 
um, a passport, a driver's license, biometrics, so I gotta have official, uh, an official ID. Um, personal details of any additional signatories, proof of address, for example, a utility bill from NAWEC, NAWEC is the electric company here. Those are the folks that I told y'all had the whole power shutdown this weekend. Um, not a power shutdown, but they shutting down a system to reboot it. So people still have power, but you had to pay in advance to have power. Because if you run out, you're out of luck over the weekend. There's nowhere to buy more. You have to wait two days. Um, so NAWEC or a letter from the Revenue Authority or the Tax Council or a statement from your village, a rent payment receipt like from your landlord or your lease, your tenancy agreement, right? And tax ID certificate and the original documents must be seen, right? It can't be like copy type stuff. So once again, one, two, three, four, five requirements to open a bank account, recent passport, driver's license, I'm sorry, go back, a recent passport photo, a driver's license or a passport, proof of address, tax certificate, so your TIN number, right, and if you have any additional people on the account with you, you need their information as well, okay, so I just wanted y'all to know that, um, so that you don't have the same kind of problems that I had trying to get uh, an account. So I even said to the woman, like, where are these things written? And this is their little book that tells you what you need to have inside. Um, you to give your book, which you write your account number. They say they want to serve you better. And this is actually from Trust Bank. And I may go back to Trust Bank. I'll see what kind of deposit they require. But the deposit is usually nominal, you know, something small maybe like $5, $10 just to open an account. Um, but I was frustrated. when I get frustrated with a bank or I don't trust them to handle things, I don't really want to deal with them because I know when I'm in a crunch, I'm not going to be able to rely on them. So I don't care for banks like that. So I have to see, like I said, but um, Trust Bank was the only one who said, here's the list. These are the things you need. And hopefully next time when I go to a bank, I'll be going back with all these things to prevent the runaround and the frustration and the aggravation. So I hope that was helpful to y'all. I hope it will prevent you from having these issues when it's time for you to go to the bank. And yes, I have y'all in my bedroom. I'm sitting on my little leather patchwork poof and I am uh, presenting this information to you today and I hope you find it helpful. Take your notes and be ready. Blessings, family.